filters and views in monday.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to chop up, change view, uh, all of the different data points in a board inside of monday.com using filters and views. So as you can see here, I am in an example monday.com system. This is just an example board. Now, first and foremost, we want to filter. Before we go ahead and create new views to see our data, we want to go and filter this information. So to do so, it's really, really simple. We have a filter option at the top here. Now, bear in mind, we've got two options when it comes to filtering. If you just click the filter option, you'll be presented with this screen here, which is called quick filters. Now, in my opinion, there is nothing quick about this, and it's actually more confusing than the advanced filters option. So if you're presented with this screen, just press switch to advanced filters down the bottom left-hand corner here. Now, alternatively, if you just want to go straight to advanced filters, just use the drop down menu on the right hand side and you'll be presented with this information here. Now, this may seem confusing, but trust me, it's super simple. So what we are going to tell Monday.com is the specific information that we want to see. So we say where and then we need to go ahead and select a column on our board or maybe a different data point from this particular board. So that's group. Um, and then obviously we've got these various columns here. So if I say where group is and then we've got our parentheses. So is, is not, text is, text is not, contains, doesn't contain, starts with. So I can go ahead and select these different options here. So if I say where group is equal to, and then it will show me the different groups available on our board. So if I say group title, which is the top one, I know the names are the same. So this doesn't make it too simple to understand, but you get the idea. So I say where group is group title. So, or I'll change this to group number one for the sake of simplicity in this video so where group is equal to group one only show me those items so only show me the items that are in group one i can change this if i would like to so i could say um change the group to where status so you can see here we've got two items that are equal to working on it so i could say where status is equal to working on it and then I could, it would go ahead and show me the items that are equal to working on it i could change the parenthesis to is not so it would show me the items where status is not equal equal to working on it so you can see you can begin to filter and see the data and the very specific information that you want to see we've then got the date option as well so the date column here where date is is not in the next in the last is between is on or after is after is on or before and then you go ahead and set the date information so if i say where date is in the next 10 days for example that will show me the net the date of all items that are upcoming in the next one day, or if I say 10 days, that might change, it might not. So only item three um, is relevant for this. So hopefully you start to get the idea. Every single column is different. I'm not gonna spend this entire video for the sake of my time and your time going through each of the different options for the columns. Go and work it out yourself. It's very, very self-explanatory once you understand the, the core basics of advanced filters in monday.com now we might want to take this a step further and let me show you how so if i change this back to where group is equal to group number one i then want to add another filter so to do so go ahead and press the new filters option here on the left hand side and now we can go ahead and tell monday.com where group is equal to group number one so we've got our items in group number one and then we've got an and or basis so i could go ahead and change this to or or and so i could say where group one is where group is equal to group one and I can then say status is equal to working on it, then it's only gonna show me the items that match both of the conditions that we've defined here, okay? So where group is group one and status is working on it. Now the alternative option is, I can change this from an and to an or. It's now gonna show item number three. The reason being is where group is equal to group number one or status is working on it, show me those items, okay? Now we can add another filter on top of that if we would like to. We do run into one problem with monday.com though. We can't do a where and or yet. And I will come on to how we would approach that in a moment's time. But for the time being with this basic functionality, we've got where group is group one or status is this or this. If I change this to and, it's gonna change the bottom option to and as well. So then we're telling monday.com where group is group one and status is working on it and blah, 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 blah. You get the idea, <laughs> okay? So quite it can get quite advanced, but we're now gonna take this a step further, right? So that's basic filters in my opinion. We can now add groups. So if I press plus new group on the right hand side here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and delete, and you can literally delete all of these, which you wouldn't be able to do unless you have added a group. 
then we can go ahead and add segmentation or cut out maybe is it segmentation or just grouping i'm going to show you what that means in a moment so i can say to monday.com where status is equal to working on it and uh let's say or i uh, go or um group is in group one so that's just giving me the same information i had a moment ago but then I can add another group. And this is where it gets quite interesting because then I go add new group and then I can change this to an and or basis again. So or, and then I can get really specific. So you can see we've kind of got layers to our filters, <laughs> which is a bit crazy. And then I could go where let's say person um, is assigned. So that's gonna continue to show me our information. And then we go, uh, I don't know, let's say name is, or let's say contains one. Okay, so what I'm telling Monday.com is show me any items where the status is working on it or group is group one um, or where person is assigned. So just a person has been assigned to that item and name contains one. But if I go ahead and change this to and that's going to reduce the number of visible um, visible columns here, visible items here. Now, if I go ahead and change this layer to and that's going to get hyper specific. And that's only actually going to show me one item because I'm telling monday.com to show me the items that only match all of this very, very specific criteria. But I'll change this back to or again. But what I can do is I can add another group. So I can go add group again. The problem we run into again with monday.com is the or and functionality is fixed for these, which is a bit frustrating. I don't want to get too upset about it, but it is a bit annoying. So there are only so many layers deep you can go with filtering inside of monday.com before it becomes a bit of a pain. But this is pretty good going. This group functionality is pretty cool. So I can add another one um, and then I can say where this and or I could go where this or this and this. But I think we've reached our limitation with groups. Hopefully, this gives you a good idea of how to use the new filters and the grouping options as well. So you can kind of get specific within layers um, which is very helpful for distilling the data that you have available inside of your monday.com system. Now, onto the second most important part of this video, or arguably the most important part of this video, we can now go ahead and save this filter as a view, which means that if this is a filter that you regularly use, you do not have to go ahead and recreate it every single time you wanna see that information. All you need to do is go ahead and press save as new view in the top right hand corner here. And that will go ahead and save as a new view. As you can see, we've now created a new view called table. Now you may wanna go ahead and uh, rename this view. So in order to do so, just go to the drop down menu and go ahead and rename it by pressing the three dotted button and rename. So I'm gonna call this example view. And there we go. Every time I now come over from the main table, so you can see there's no filters on the main table at all. It's gonna show me all of my data. Every time I go to my example view, it will only show me the filtered information and that filter information has been saved, which is great because it means that I don't have to make any changes and I can see the same data every time I go over to this board. Um, and this is the great thing about views. I can then create another view if I wanted to. So if I go, so there, another way of doing this is going to add view and then I can literally just create a new table view um, and then it will automatically populate. And then you can see here, we've now got three. If I go to this table, I'll remove these filters. So clear all. And then I can create another set of filter criteria for this particular view. If I go back to the example view, these still exist and nothing has actually changed. Um, and then the main table view shows me everything. If I go to the table view, maybe I just want to see, uh, I want to delete all of this. It's not applicable. And I'm just going to want to go where status is or is and then I'll go blank and then I can delete all of this and just press save the view. So this is just gonna show me all of the items where the status is equal to blank. Super simple, <laughs> super simple, right? And you can keep going down this and this makes your life a lot easier as opposed to having to create multiple new views. One other thing I will show you in this video, so that's filter functionality and using different tables to save your view. We can also hide columns as well. So if I wanna go ahead and press hide column, I can go ahead and select the column that I do not wanna see on this particular view. So I can unselect the location and the numbers column, and then it's just gonna hide, very similar to an Excel spreadsheet. If I then head back to my main table, of course, all of those columns are still visible. If I just go back to the table view that we created, you can see that those columns are now hidden. Just make sure that you press the save to, to this view when you are making any changes. So if I wanna add that column, that numbers column back, make sure you press save to this view. Um, and then every time you come to this view, you will see 
see the filter criteria and the hidden columns available as well or the hidden columns not present on that particular view i know this has been quite comprehensive hopefully this has given you some detail into filter functionality and the views and saving views for your filters thank you very much for watching if you need any help setting up monday.com for your business check out the link below we'd be delighted to help i will see you soon thank you and goodbye